Episode 18, Fireside Chat with Daryl Garner, Dr. Collectible, Part 1. Hey Card Fam, how are you doing? Welcome to the 18th episode of The Card Diary by Hobby S. Thompson. And as always, I'm your podcast host, Danny Cards. You can find me on Instagram at Danny underscore cards and on other social media platforms. And that is what this episode is about, social media and content creation. We are back to the guest episodes where I bring in experts to talk about the subject matter I present in the chapter episodes. And so if you heard the last episode, episode number 17, you heard me for almost an hour straight just talk about social media and my content journey, but I'm not really sure how much you might have learned from that. But I did want to share that journey to talk about different types of content and what worked for me to get me to where I am. But that's not to say that will work for you. And the more important thing is, why do any of us really care about the number of followers, right? It's just a number. And we are not numbers. We are actual human beings, individuals. And that's what I like to explore in this podcast, the the humanity within the hobby we all love so much. Well, okay, humanity, at least... You know, that's the case until we have bots listening to the podcasts about, you know, how humanity works. And then they take over the world like Terminator and Skynet, um, which, by the way, awesome movie, of course. I don't even have to say anything more about that movie, uh, especially Terminator 2. Just so good. Um, and I will refrain from doing an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression here. OK, so. Back to content creation. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say after you listen to my chat with Daryl Garner, Dr. Collectible. He is just so impressive. And I say this in our chat, but he is just so smooth and he has so much riz. And when I see his content, I actually feel really good. And I truly believe that he is good people in the hobby. And so when he agreed to be on, I was thrilled. I really was. And... I will let you know, though, we almost went a full two hours. And so in the past, I have broken the Fireside Chat episodes up into two separate episodes. But for this one, I think I might have to make it into a three-parter, maybe even four. I I haven't figured it all out yet. But I will also say up front that we had some unfortunate audio connectivity issues in the beginning. But... We did figure out that if we mute our microphones when the other person is talking, that this really helped with the audio quality. So uh, I'm really big on audio fidelity. I mean, this is optimized for audio, but I will say that the first few minutes may be really tough to listen to, but that it does get better. I can assure you that. Um, Also, we (sighs) delve into a really sensitive and difficult topic pretty early on with regard to diversity in the hobby. And I know that I've talked about that in a prior intro to an episode. Um, And I will very much, you know, reveal behind the curtain. It's something that I asked him if he wanted to talk about. And he said, you know, sure, let's do it. Um, But we didn't have anything planned out or scripted. He and I actually didn't even, uh, we DM, you know, and we like show the uh, content and comments. But, you know, this was actually the first time that he and I actually had a one-on-one. That's the case with almost all of my guests. Um, We just, you know, there's like the chemistry is in the DMs. And we just try to see if that transports or translates into chemistry on the recording. But, um, you know, like I say in the chat, I knew that we weren't going to solve these large societal issues in and out of the hobby in one podcast episode or numerous or many but I do think that it's important to advance this discussion forward. And I'll, I guess I'll say why. I mean, I know that this hobby is an escape for a lot of us, um, you know, especially if you're not an industry insider or if you're not doing this full time. And I know that's certainly the case for me. It's an escape. I mean, this is what I love doing um, with my hobby time, you know, my leisure time. So I'm not really trying to beat anyone over the head with talk of diversity in the hobby, but, you know, uh, I've mentioned it also, like I said, in a prior episode, it was King of Collectibles, Golden Touch, when I had Jason Hickey on the podcast. But here's the thing. 
you know, I, I am the host of this podcast. You know, I'm starting to get more comfortable with that hat and, you know, wearing those, the clothes of the podcast host. And I am Korean American. I just am, you know, um, I was born in Korea. I came to the U.S. when I was really young, when I was two years old and got my Amer American citizenship uh, in my late teens. And, you know, I absolutely love this country. I really do. And shout out to all my international listeners, because I see you. I see you on my Spotify analytics. It's really cool to see. But, you know, when it comes to me, like what you see literally and figuratively, what like, for, for example, when you see me at the National or in a card show or in my social media content creation, like what you see is what you get. And again, my soup, I've talked out about it before. My soup isn't for everyone. You know, there's some people where it's going to be too hot. It's going to be too cold. But for some people, hopefully it's the right temperature. And um, speaking about food, um, kimchi. <laughs> Kimchi is very polarizing. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't like kimchi. You know, I'll very much admit, I'm dealing with that in my own household, with my own kids who don't like the smell of it or the taste of it. But, you know, I'm working on that with them. But, you know, that's also me. Like, I can't, I simply cannot disassociate my identity with something so intimate as this podcast. So if you're cool with it, if you're cool, and you don't have to be cool with kimchi, but I'm just saying, if you're cool with the podcast so far, I hope you're cool with it going forward. You know, awesome. I would love to have you, have you, have you as a listener, but if it's not for you, that's all right, too, you know? So hope you have a really good listen to part one. You know, that's all I wanted to say for now. Uh, Dr. Collectible and I talk about, uh, you know, pretty heavy hitting topics maybe early on. As, to, as opposed to maybe like warming up to it and getting to that, we, we kind of really hit it right at the beginning. Um, but we also talk about so many more things. So I'm really excited for the future parts of this uh, fireside chat as well. So I hope you enjoy. And I'm going to have to do it. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> All right. It, all this out in the beginning okay here we go <clears throat> welcome to what i think will be episode 18 of the card diary by hobby s thompson i am your host denny cards the self-proclaimed jack of all trades master of none in the hobby and you can find me on instagram at denny underscore cards and other social media platforms that i'm not that much into and i have a podcast account at hobby s thompson that i really haven't put much time into but I do monitor on occasion. For those who are not on social media, you can email the show at hobbyesthompson at gmail.com with your questions and comments. And if you could leave a review to wherever you get your podcasts, I would really appreciate that as it can get the word out of the hobby's fastest growing podcast, mainly because I started from zero five, month, five weeks ago. Uh, and I reached a awesome milestone over 500 plays across all episodes just reached that milestone uh by today's recording and regarding today's recording apologies in advance if you hear my washer and dryer in the background uh we just came back from a family vacation and laundry could not wait but nor could the podcast and today's guest so Getting to today's episode, it's a fireside chat episode that chronologically should come after a chapter episode where I talk about content creation and social media in the hobby. And I have an expert on that field, uh, a very special guest. Let me tell you about this young man. Uh, this young man, he is, how old are you again? Uh, 33. 33. This young man of 33 years of age in such a short span of time has taken the hobby by storm. In his Instagram bio, you will see that he is a media ambassador for the national coming up very shortly at the time of recording, uh, like two, two weeks away. Um, he is a media ambassador for Hobby Slam, which I want to ask about in a bit here, and also a brand ambassador for G Fuel Energy. He has 15,000 followers. <laughs> yeah, you know what? For the folks who are watching on the video on YouTube um, and, and for the audio folks, I will let you know that he just showed his T-shirt that has the G Fuel Energy insignia and blazons on his T-shirt. 
He has 15,000 followers on Instagram. But if you have connected with him online, you know that you are more than just a number to him because he is one of the hardest working individuals in the hobby. And he he answers all DMs and he is is a great hobby ambassador. So even though this is someone who I have not yet met in person, but I look forward to meeting in the national. I consider him a good friend in the hobby. We've uh, DM'd a lot and we are fans of each other. Uh, he straight up oozes charisma, which is what the kids nowadays call Riz. He is the one and only Daryl Garner, Dr. Collectible. Welcome to the pod, my friend. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, I appreciate you being able to display this platform for individuals like me and others that are in the hobby that are trying to make something of them. So uh, thank you. Thank you for this time, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, I believe this is going to be a great conversation, man. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, when I when I put the ask out and you said yes, I, every time a guest says yes, I'm just so thrilled. And again, this one is going to be really interesting because the first few chapters of the card diary had to do with buying, selling, and trading, which involves capital, which involves money. I know one of the things that you mentioned um, in some of your content has been like how you you have made a, your place in the hobby without even having to sell like cards. Like I know you're a collector, but you you do so much for the hobby in so many different ways that don't involve uh, spending money and and having to you know put. Uh, a lot of like you don't have to have the biggest collection to have the biggest uh, followership or the biggest um, influence. If again, I, we're going to talk about whether you consider yourself an influencer or an inspirer or things like that. But um, you really have been a, a great example of someone who uh, is able to just be, be such a great positive uh, presence in the hobby without like having to flash the most expensive cards in the world. I appreciate that. That's what I'm all about. Um, when I first started, like just got to collect, uh, I want to utilize my platform as an outlet for individuals that couldn't make it to shows like the now. Um, I remember a, year, uh, a couple of years back, I did this actually this year is from my, my, so I remember times where I was at home watching content figuring out, you know, to make my place in the hobby. Um, from there, so about the back. Um, from there, like, I wanted to get into the hobby in a different way. And I always thought about, you know, how can I make money in a hobby without having to sell a car or, sorry, it's the noise distracting me background you know it's not just your noise i really think that it's my washer and dryer that are like um causing some reverb or not reverb but like i actually might go and do something that my wife is not gonna be really happy about but i think i might stop the dryer because i think that's affecting the audio um but give me one moment um i'm not gonna press record um just uh like i like i've said to other guests when they've um when when i've had to kind of talk while while I'm off camera, which won't be for more than like 20 seconds, but if you could just kind of like talk a little bit. Um, I thought it was me in my bag. Yeah. Some eat, <laughs> eat the minutes, eat the minutes. I'll be right back. <sighs> this is real life, y'all. This is like the life of a uh, basement podcaster who has a family. Um, hopefully this will be better. Um, okay. So I think your, your audio is coming out great. Um, I hope mine is. Uh, I turned off the, it only had five minutes left, but I'm like, you know what? I, I have to do this for the pod. I did it for the hobby. <laughs> for the hobby one time. Man. But that, that, that's what I was saying. I, I, I just looked at it. Um, as my platform as for individuals that couldn't make it to the shows and things of that nature so first thing i did was i went to my first show which was coach collision interviewed everyone that i could i wanted to from the seller point of view the buyer 
but as well um, as a consumer of just the content from the hobby. So that was like my big thing with me, and like you say, with finding ways of how to how to make a living in the hobby without having to sell a car. Um, I looked at I looked at the hobby as like the matrix. Um, how can I make money within a hobby without having to sell a car? I started uh, my own after school program it's about uh, sports cards. All of them have their own eBay accounts that are run by their parents. And, um, you know, look up. They are learning how to be young businessmen and women um, throughout the hobby. Uh, another thing was doing partnerships um, with content and partnering with businesses. Um, I look at myself as, you know, selling business and not selling cars. I'm into the business of selling businesses that sell cars. Um, so that was the other big thing for me. And after that, everything else, um, making money, revenue streams, just figuring out ways of um, connecting with the car shows across the country, partnering with them. I knew I could make great content but from there everything just started from that type of mindset which was how i can make money in a hobby without having to sell a car because sometimes i don't know how the car market may do that was my thing that that's really awesome um and and speaking about collaborations uh you were very nice to ask me if we could have a collaborated post on instagram and you were just minutes before we started this uh, recording, you posted about being on, you know, the podcast today and you invited me to be a collaborator and I accepted. And now I'm getting all these notifications from people liking that post more than I have for my own stuff where now I, you know, my phone is on silent, so that's not going to be a problem. But, you know, now I get to see the 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 effect, the doctor collectible effect, the bump, if you will. And it's it's a real thing. You really have a lot of not just people who follow you but engage they like your stuff they they you get engagement on your posts and you know i think that you really do move the needle in this hobby and in a positive direction but um i also wanted to say um i think we lost your video no nah, you good brother okay um but i feel like uh you know that there is no way that happened overnight. I mean, I will say I, I did check your your archives. Your very first post was on July 17th, 2021. So it hasn't even been two years, but you have one of the biggest accounts. And, you know, you started from zero. Like my cat trace that I have is that we all start from zero and you start from zero and you grew at such a quick pace. But in an, I feel like, again, I've only been in, in um, social media for like 10 months now or nine months. But it just seems so organic. And so, again, in like, I think you're a great example of someone who's doing it the right way and doing it, you know, in a positive direction. So I wanted to ask, you know, it hasn't always been that way, I'm sure, with regards to like being being able to move the needle. So could we start from not the start, start from when you were a kid? Maybe that's something we'll get to in the uh, down down the road in, the, in this um, podcast. But when it comes to you starting July 17th, 2021. Can you can you tell folks how you were able to get to where you currently are back from that time in July 17th, 2021? Wow. Um, that's the first time I've been there. Um, I, that time in my life, it was a very, very dark time. Very mm. dark time. Um, I, I want to display the things I was going through, but when I say coming home from work one time, came home to, to that, um, you know, our things of that nature, just uh, the stuff that I was going through, uh, the relationship I was in, just it's, it was a lot. And um, I had to revamp myself. I had to find myself, and I went back to the things that I love to do. Uh, I am an actor and also a, a choreographer. Um, before I started getting into this. Um, and I wanted to transition myself. Uh, and I thought about, you know, going into Dr. Collectible. And my homie, Dot Bando, uh, one of my business partners, he told me about a few Pokemon cards that he had. He was like, yo, these are going for crazy amounts. And long story short, my dad will always send me 
Kobe Bryant cards out of his collection and my collection. Because I stay in Atlanta now. He stays in uh, East St. Louis. So talking like an eight-hour drive. So he will always ship me off cards on my birthday. And I looked at my sports cards. And I said, yo, these cards are pretty valuable. Long story short, um, want to change my life, to start to sell cards cards, things of that nature, and from there, everything was a change. I bought my first Kobe Bryant auto on eBay, uh, Fab Floor, uh, 2001 Fab Floor auto, and bought it for like around eight, 900 on eBay, um, got it graded, came back PSA 10, pop one, took it to Golden, came back 3700 so I went from $800, 900 to $3,700. And I put everything into my brand. So once again, that goes back to how can I make amount of money in the hobby without having to sell a car right after that? Even though I wanted to collect, I just wanted to collect. I didn't want to buy and flip and everything, but I also wanted to be in the hobby to be able to make a living. And that's what catapulted me to doing that. And before that, um, I played a lot of video games. I sold my Xbox that I bought for 500 so that for 1200 which got me to buy the Kobe Auto. That's how that kind of worked out. From there, everything changed. That is awesome. So are you are you a full-time uh, content creator and uh, you know are you are you in the hobby or is this like a part-time thing for you? This right now has became a full-time for full-time thing for me about so, um when I started making Different, different revenue streams for myself, like even the clothing, I made sure that I did a pre-order mm. and basically paid for their own hats without me having to come out my pocket, but it was just the way I had to do it to gravitate around um, you know, the audience and the band. But um, Like I say, with me, it was just all about that spark trying to um, create something, like I said longevity wise gotcha so it's almost like a kickstarter i imagine where you put up something for like a campaign and then once you reach your goal you're able to distribute what you promised the folks that you were going to give them yep yeah man um and, and, and that's what it's all about you know um, creating something for the people um uh, with me like I said, I look at the hobby as a, as the main. Um, something I do want to say. When I first, I wouldn't say when I first got into the hobby, but how I look at it now. There are three kids that I look at. Actually, let me rephrase. I believe adults lose their imagination. Imagination gives you the thought process to believe whatever you want to believe that you want to be in life. So three kids that I look at in a hobby right now that I feel like have the expectations of everything that I'm trying to get across. That's why I look at certain kids in a hobby and seeing what the youth is feeding off of. Three kids. One is Elijah. Um, Elijah, he is great. He brings the, the spark. He brings the excitement to the hobby. And I'm explaining that. Two is Blake. Um, Blake, he brings the media and business part of the hobby. And the last one is Pull My Card, the uh, kid reporter. He brings the entertainment to the hobby. And when, and the reason why I break them three down is because Elijah, um, he's into the things that kids break, stuff like that. You know, that, that surprise feeling of looking for that one-on-one. -on -one. Blake is more of a business individual where he is a ambassador for the national but also um he works with different businesses such as like tristar you know you name it um he's working and i love it even uh affiliate with fifth farm um, breaks so i think that's dope and then kid reporter um uh, for pull my car he's all about the entertainment he's out there interviewing he's out there in the hobby at these shows getting the content creating the content that kids like him or adults like myself want to check out when it comes to the hobby. So them elements is what I look at within myself. And 
and what I try to bring to the hobby. So I want to shout out from three individuals on what they do. I'm proud of them kids. Um, like I said, a lot of them had on my thoughts on why I think the way I think in the presence that I try to give. I, I love that. And I may or may not be trying to get uh, some of those individuals on the podcast with their, of course, with their parental approval and supervision. Um, but yes, I, I don't think I know the third one as much, but Elijah and Blake are great ambassadors for the hobby for not just for their age, but for the hobby in general. It's, uh, I mean, we, maybe not all of us collected as kids, but you know, a good amount of us who came back into the hobby, we were their age pulling cards in the you know 80s or 90s or earlier or later but i mean that uh, what you just said about adults losing imagination i mean you know a fair amount of people go into the corporate world or non-creative things or pe things that they were pushed to go into by their parents or you know just they they go away from cards and they don't just go away from cards but they go, they go away from creativity and imagination so what you just said just now is like really cool. I, I really appreciate that because I, I agree with you hundred percent. And those, and those kids are, they're not just the future of the hobby. They, they are the hobby. Exactly. Just imagine Blake, Elijah, a reporter, you know, 15 years. Something to definitely think about. Yeah, no, definitely. And, um, you know, I did want to ask you before we get into some more things. Um, you, I feel like, uh, you know, I started a little bit uh, more than a year after you. Again, you started July 17th, 2021. I started in September of 2022. I mean, in, in, in Instagram, I'm sorry, our posts. But uh, I noticed two things when I was going through your archives. One was that your logo was designed uh, like I remember your first post hat had you in a lab coat, doctors, the doctor's whites, the white coat. Um, but I noticed that your logo was designed around April 13th, 2022. And that was like nine months after your account. And for me, I think my current, you know, uh, the, the NBA jam logo thing was created months after I started too. So before I get into that, I did want to also ask you like, or I wanted to make a observation, which is, the very first card posts that you made on your Instagram were pictures of your cards on the floor, on the wood floor. And that was literally me too. I was literally just taking pictures of my cards on the floor. And to, to think where you and I've both gone in such a short time with our content is, is remarkable. Like, you know, going from like just the very basic, here are the shots, no nice background, no filters, just like, here it is on my basement, living room, wherever floor to now. Like, it's just, it's really astounding. Exactly. Um, I remember them days. That that was the first time I was posting on Instagram was, um, I was just posting my cards. I'm gonna, I, I didn't even post my face. Um, I think my first, my first logo, like, like you said, um, that time frame before I actually created the brand, the identity of Dr. Collectible, which was the logo. I had an uh, emergency sign as my logo. So it was just a emergency sign with the plus, with the red in the back, white plus sign or whatnot. But um, I thought red would catch people's eyes. Uh, I thought people would be like, yo, emergency sign, what the heck is this? And then, you know, Dr. Collectible, I thought it mixed, but um, it was truly when I finally got the logo made, which I was able to create my identity for myself and um, as Dr. Collectible, and there it just um, blossomed. But you never forget the days, how, like you say, how you first started. And also, that that's what keeps you humble, too. Um, that's what makes me respect other content creators. I know where they started from. It, this isn't nothing easy. First of all, you got to build confidence, even for what you're doing. Um, you got to build confidence to put your face on a brand that you believe in yourself and not even sure how other people may gravitate around it. So for you, kudos to you as well. Uh, and many and many other individuals that took the um, leap of just 
not just posting cars, but also creating content around people that love cars, you know, and putting their face out there. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I mean, it definitely took me a while and it took it took some encouragement from folks in the hobby, um, both of, you know, my my skin color, like of Asian descent and also other folks who are just like, you know, um, not just like if you want to grow and if you want to have more likes and more followers, but it was just more like if you want your content to connect and not just that, but if you want to show if you keep talking about representation, but if you don't want to put yourself out there, like what what are you doing here? Like you you know, you can't just say you're all about representation in the hobby, but then not show your face and just talk about it. Like, you know, be about it. <laughs> oh, seriously. Um, I love how you brought up your culture in the hobby. Um, figuring out yourself in this uh, playing field. We, I'm, I'm pretty sure we all seen the different things uh, when it comes to just race and the hobby and diversity. And um, I, it's a it's a hard subject. Some people are built for it, and some people are not. Me personally, I, I would love to get on a platform such as yours and be able to talk about that, and uh, and not be in the comments going back and forth and things that nature. Like I, I think people have something to say, and just not in the comments, but or on different posts, but just being able to hear it come out their mouth, that is very big because then you understand the feelings that comes with the words of um, passion that they're just trying to type off across the internet. So um, for me, I feel like diversity is something big. I feel like it's needed in the hobby. Um, I, should, I should be able to see an Asian, a Korean, uh, a black person, a white person, um, anyone of any color. If you come in and you're the color purple, hey, welcome. Who are you? You know, introducing yourself. You may learn something different from a different race or a different ethnicity uh, in the hobby. And I think as us, individuals like me and you, should uh, continue to raise the bar uh, with content business-wise, to show these individuals in the hobby that, yeah, uh, a black man as myself, or, you know, someone of a different racial descent other than American can make something of themselves in this hobby and uh, and be appreciated, too, uh, of their background, but also be, be able to be understanding, too, man. That's another thing, is to be understanding, man, um, when it comes to cultures so um i really love what you said and i'm just going to add to it usually i take my head off because it's hot because it, i we just get so uh deep into this but we got we're getting deep real early into this one um you know what i've noticed that helps both of our audios is i think when i when you speak i go on mute and when i speak if you can go on mute i think that could help the audio quality because if there's one thing that i'm worried about with this ep particular episode it it is just the the audio fidelity, but um, so I, I wanted to talk about uh, editing tools, card shop live threads, but we have to talk about this because it's it's up now, and the natural flow of conversation brings us to this topic. I don't know how much what of what I'm about to say is going to that you're going to agree with or you know um, disagree with. So I'll just speak for myself and I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, and, and honestly, we talked about, should we talk about this? But we didn't, this is, none of this is scripted. None of this is planned ahead of time. I don't even have talking points about this stuff, um, which is probably dangerous, but here we go. Um, I, I have definitely talked about uh, diversity in the hobby in, in earlier episodes. Uh, you know, I mentioned that's why I like the show King of Collectibles, uh, the Golden Touch, because they had what seemed to be organic, um, uh, organic diversity. Like it didn't look, it didn't seem forced, and they just had a lot of uh, a diverse cast of characters. And so, uh, in that intro to that episode, I mentioned about facing some. Uh, I don't know if it's outright racism or like inappropriate comments, definitely racism as a kid, I would say, but like 
the racist shop owner or the person who just doesn't make me feel welcome. And it's like me, but then other people, they do make feel welcome. You know what I mean? And sometimes you're like, is it, is it me? But no, it's like, it's them. I, as an adult, now I realize it wasn't me. It was them. Um, I've dealt, I've definitely dealt with uh, things since I've come back to the hobby in social media. And I didn't really get into particulars with this, I don't think. Um, and I'm not going to mention the names and who they are, because ultimately the, the names of who they who said this, they don't matter. You know, the names of trolls don't matter. But, you know, when the whole Chinese spy balloon, again, I'm Korean American, but I remember that. And I don't know what's going on with my my video as we're talking about race. But um, I remember this person uh, jokingly, not jokingly saying like, oh, are you a Chinese spy? And I'm like. One, not the right country, but also just not appropriate. We're, we're here to talk about cards. We're not here to talk about race. But when it comes to diversity in the hobby, it is very glaringly uh, a white male-dominated hobby where uh, women in the hobby are sometimes uh, either an afterthought or are told to have a separate panel and, you know, just tell us, you know, we don't, we, we want to know what it's like to be a woman in the hobby. But, you know, they're, they're just collectors like all of us, right? All of us men. And yet I also, when it comes to representation and hobby, I, I feel like um, in, in and out of the hobby, right? Because it's not just a hobby. The, hob the hobby is almost like a microcosm of society. But I feel like I do want people to see my color of my skin because the color of my skin is what uh, may show that I may have different, uh, that I, I may come from a different walk of life that I want people to see my color because there are people that are, oh, I'm colorblind. I don't see color in people. I think that's a pretty old, traditional, you know, 18, 1980s, 1990s way of looking at race in, in the United States. Um, and because we are talking about the United States here, but I do feel like, you know, once you say you don't see color, you're, you're talking about not providing equity to other races, not acknowledging that minorities do have disadvantages in a very inherent and uh, in, in, in institutionalized racism where maybe people mean well, but we know that there is so much uh, disadvantages placed upon minorities. Uh, one prime example that comes off of my head, which again, <laughs> now that this is scripted, but you know, with uh, zip code discrimination with the real estate markets, right? Where people are like, oh, if you're from this particular zip code, we know that you're, you know, you can afford a certain, uh, it, it's this, it's this certain amount of uh, money for this house, and you're gonna vote this certain way, and you're going to have these preferences when it comes to being a consumer. But again, like. It's just, I, I feel like this is definitely a very sensitive and hard subject and I'm definitely no pro at it or, you know, someone who is going to have all the answers. But I do think the more important thing about all of this is that we talk about it and that we acknowledge that um, the hobby can do a better job of being more representative of the, the country as a whole in the United States. Uh, I agree. Um me personally i do feel like america is the best country in the world period i i would rather live here than some other countries in this world and and i'm talking about it's a lot of places that have it worse than us just imagine walking around and there's civil war going on or you know it's a, it's a lot deeper than what it is i and i know there's certain situations that go on with different cultures in this hobby that we're personally trying to get over this hump gradually, whether if it was seeing um, black men and women being killed by police in the streets, we've seen riots happen, we've seen a whole lot of things happen in this country. I do feel like we're getting into a better place. It's going to take individuals like us to have a better understanding and knowing that um, there's more to what you just see yes you see my skin color but also understand me understand why i'm crying and i'm in pain you know from what my people have endured what your people have endured let's agree to disagree let's get an understanding uh, i feel like if we get to that point and people you know take down their egos and take down their guard and be willing to understand the next man or woman, 
like you said, we, we will be so much in a better place. And like you say, the hobby is just a small spectrum of that. But the community now is so broad with individuals like me and you. It's like you have to take that into account as well. Um, but only, like you said, it's just a small portion of what we go through on an everyday basis in this country. But I would still rather be here. This is the place where dreams are made. Um, you can be anything that you want to be in this country. Yes, we are not in the 1920s, the 1800s, or early 1940s. Yes, I can walk around and pick whatever school that I want to go to without having to be dismissed because of the color of my skin. But um, them individuals, them hierarchies, or them individuals that think like that, they're dying off. And there's no dis disrespect or anything like that, but um, there's going to be individuals like me and you and also the kids that are coming up in the hobby that are going to change the game, that's going to change the format. And um, I think we're going to be in a better place, seriously. I, I really do. Awesome. Um, thank you for that. I mean, just to add on to that some more, I, I do feel as if, again, we've, we are as a country, we've come a long way and we're always getting better. Um, I know we've had some setbacks recently with just more discussion of race in the forefront, but again, it's come to the forefront in, in, for some people, this conversation may be difficult. Some people may skip through this or do this on 2x speed. And I, I totally understand. But I think the whole premise of my podcast is for us to understand each other better. So we're not othering each other. And I'm not talking about uh, right now we're talking about race. But, you know, this it doesn't have to be politicized. So much of race has become politicized. And uh, so much of the hobby in some ways has also become like a haves and have nots and politicization. And I've seen more po politics in my feed recently than I have in the past. Uh, like I just recently said how just posting about 4th of July, just posting about a card has now gotten people upset about patriotism and what it represents or, you know, what, what things represent. And you can't even say the words like gas prices or baby formula without it becoming political. Right. And that's unfortunate because I don't, I, I definitely know that I've made deals with both uh, people from both parties and someone's politics to me like that does not matter. Like, I don't want to say I don't care because I'm trying to tell my kids don't say I don't care. But people's politics don't matter to me. Um, but people's race, it's not that it. Oh, I'm going to give different deals to different uh, races of people. But I want to see more representation in the hobby. I want to see more people that look like me, that look like you, because we have to be more representative of the United States because we're all consumers and we're all buying, selling and trading. We should all be making content and just, you know, the cream will rise to the top. And it's not like uh, other countries where, you know, like you said, you can be anything you want and it is the best country in the world. I love America. I probably love it more than you know, white people for some white people, like it's just, it means so much. Like I was born in Korea, but you know, I'm American citizen now. And to go through that naturalization process, really, it mean I wasn't born into it. I was, you know, I, I earned it by living here, you know, like just maybe I was a dreamer. I don't know, but, um, I, I got it in my late teens and it means a lot to me to be in this country. And I love it, uh, for all it's good and bad and the ugly. Uh, I really do. Um, so having said that, we do have a long way to go. Um, and I feel, I feel like, oh my goodness, we could talk about this forever, but the othering, this is what I want to talk about in this particular, uh, podcast. It's about, let's learn about streamers so that we're not just like, oh, all streamers or all breakers suck. You know, let's learn about custom card art people maybe even people who make logo designs because we we all get annoyed by people who tell us hey do you want a sick logo or sick custom mat but that is a cottage industry and people actually earn a living doing that and they're good at it they're really creative and they're really good um i'm not sure if i will have a logo designer on my podcast cuz you know usually they're um they don't like to <laughs> they don't like to talk i guess other than making business but you know i want people to see how the other side lives in a way i just want people to get a better better understanding of of each other so that we are more understanding and compassionate because there is so much factoring with politics with with um you know 
uh, th this is the way to collect and the way not to collect. And, you know, rich people telling poor people what to do and like poor people punching up at rich people. It's just so much othering that I just want us to kind of like get a better understanding of each other. I, I really do agree with you on that, man. I uh, like how you broke that down. I think people need to hear that. Um, I appreciate you even, you know, taking the time out to even personally know your thoughts. It's the first time I've really been able to hear you express your thoughts on just race. Because, you know, we don't we don't talk about that. We're, we're not in that mindset to be in that, that realm all the time. Um, that ain't the first thing I want to talk about when I come across you anyway, but, um, thank you. I just say thank you, man, for being able to break that down, for letting the people hear your point of view and even my point of view to agree or disagree. Um, but at the end of the day, hopefully people look at this and be like, okay, I get an understanding and I know why he thinks the way he thinks and why he moves the way he moves. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, very nice of you to say. Um, that's why I call it a fireside chat. I know it's kind of gimmicky, but it is supposed to be not just like an interview. It's not just supposed to be a, I mean, I do want to keep it one on one and that's the fireside chat element of it. But I do want to share my life and I love talking. <laughs> so that even if I don't know a lot about a subject, it has never stopped me from talking. So I will just uh, talk as much as uh, people allow me to, which is why I guess I have a podcast. But this has been really great, but um, I don't want to make this entire um, episode about race, but certainly it's great that we're talking about it. Um, I, You know what? I think it just means that I have to have you on another time and talk about it more. Um, but when it comes to the content creation and social media, again, it's almost like we all have different parts of ourselves. Like, yes, I'm Korean American. Um, but I don't throw it in people's face all the time. Like I am a hobbyist. I'm a collector. I love my cards. And that is why we're all here. So going back to the cards, the content, the content creation, the social media presence, um, could you kind of uh, talk to me about the how you created Dr. Collectible as a persona? Yeah. So um, one day I was thinking. I'm going to be honest with you, it all came back for me wanting to be a, a doctor, wanted to be a doctor growing up, never got a PhD, but I said, if I'm going to get a PhD in anything, once again, that's the imagination kicking in, um, I'm going to get it in cards. And the first thing I thought about was, I, I started looking up names on Instagram, okay, these, this is different, this is different, just seeing what's, you know what I'm saying, what's available out there. And um, one day, it just popped and clicked and say, Dr. Collect, okay, I want a PhD in cars. I want a PhD in a hobby. And that's how I wanted to do it. I didn't go to college for sports cars. Ain't nobody teach me none. I taught myself everything besides also getting inspiration from other people, like uh, Prism Guy, Wiz Collector, uh, Mr. Get It and Flip It. And there's so many other uh, collectors out there I've learned stuff from when it comes to the art of dealing cards or anything of that nature. So for me, that's how I kind of like found my place. I wanted to become a doctor growing up. I said, well, hell, I'm going to become doctor collectible. Nobody wasn't pursuing that. And I literally ran with it. After that, it was a wrap. I took, I, and the thing about it, I'm, I was so serious about it that I went cosplay. If you notice, I walk around with a doctor's jacket at some events. Um, I, I do it all the time at anime events because I, I just love a lot of things um, in life in general. So uh, I tried to bring cosplay into it as well. I actually come to these events or card events as an actual doctor. My first event, Coach Collision, I did that. And um, I seen people turning their heads like, hmm? then I had the hat, Dr. Collectible. Then, oh, okay, now it makes sense. First, it felt like a gimmick, but then I started seeing people around me start taking it serious, and I started educating people about cards. I mean, I had the little magnifier where you was able to look at cards, you know, um, knowing how to clean cards, um, some I learned from my dad, um, knowing how to preserve cards. So that's all that, that theme of Dr. Collectible came from, and then 
you know, from there, I just wanted to take it up to another notch with everything else that came around it. Oh, man. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, it's working. It's working.